the late 19th century it was a time when the spanish empire was in decline the balance of power in the world stage was shifting spain started to lose one by one its american colonies and the us started to expand the rise of us and the decline of spain ultimately brought these two countries into war hello i'm daipen and welcome to social knowledge in today's video the spanish american war let me give some background first In 1492 when Christopher Columbus landed in the Caribbean he proclaimed the land in the name of the king of Spain Over the years Spain conquered the whole of Central America the whole of South America except for Brazil and also much of North America It also conquered the Philippines and the island of Guam in the Pacific In the 18th century the Spanish empire was at its peak and it was so large that it was called the empire in which the sun never sets Now about the United States The nation gained its independence from Britain in 1776. The US started to work on growing its economy and its westward expansion. The US expanded very rapidly. It gained the Louisiana province from the French in 1803, the Florida province from Spain in 1819. Then it had a war with Mexico between 1846 to 1848. It gained Mexico's northern parts and the Gadsden Purchase of 1854. The US formed the country as we know today. During the time of the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte in France in early 19th century, Spain had been an ally of France, but in 1808, Napoleon invaded Spain and quickly defeated its weakened military. The king of Spain, Ferdinand VII, was held captive by Napoleon, and Napoleon installed his own brother Joseph Bonaparte into the throne of Spain. The defeat against France and the oppressive attitude of Spanish authorities in Spain's American colonies provoked the wars of independence in the entire Spanish America one by one from Mexico to every Latin American country gained its independence finally by 1833 Spain lost all of its American colonies it only had Cuba Puerto Rico in the Caribbean and the Philippines and Guam in the Pacific Cuba also fought desperately for its independence. In 1868, it fought a war known as the 10 Years' War. Since it lasted until 1878, it was a failure and it was brutally suppressed by the Spanish forces. Though the United States supported the Cuban revolutionaries and wanted Cuba to gain independence, it couldn't send military aid to Cuba since the US itself was recovering from its own civil war, which lasted between 1861 to 1865. The Cubans attempted once again in 1879 known as the Little War but this revolution also was brutally suppressed by next year in 1880 Taking advantage of the situation in Cuba the US business began monopolizing the sugar markets In 1894 90% of Cuba's total exports went to the US Cuba's total exports to the US were almost 12 times larger than the export to Spain The oppression of the Spaniards on the Cubans grew year on year. The third attempt for independence broke out in 1895, which is formally known as the Cuban War of Independence. This time Spain sent almost 220,000 men. This was the largest army to cross the Atlantic. It was only overshadowed by the US during World War II. The ruthless governor general of Cuba, Valeriano Weyler, forced thousands of Cubans into areas guarded by Spanish troops. that lacked basic levels of sanitation food and shelter as a result of this thousands of cubans died almost 50000 in havana itself the prolonged war between the cuban rebels and the spanish affected the us businesses in cuba and the major and also the majority of us population supported the cuban rebels and wanted to see cuba independent from spain but us president william mckinley did not want a war with spain and wanted a peaceful resolution to ensure the safety of the american citizens in cuba president mckinley sent the us warship uss maine to havana in january 1898 on february 15th 1898 the uss maine exploded and sank in havana harbor killing 250 of the 355 sailors on board there was no clear evidence on the cause of the explosion but the american citizens believed that spain was the culprit the sinking of the uss maine ultimately led president mckinley to declare war on spain on april 28 1898 
The declaration of war was also fueled by the oppressive attitude of Spanish authorities on the local Cubans. The US Navy blockaded Cuba and this made Spain to declare war on the US on April 23rd. Now the war. First in the Pacific theater because the US attacked first not as expected in Cuba but the US Navy attacked in the Philippines which took the Spain completely by surprise. On 1st May 1898, the US Navy's Asiatic Squadron under George Dewey attacked the Spanish fleet stationed at Manila Bay. The US achieved victory in just a matter of hours. Emilio Aguinaldo, a Filipino leader who was leading a rebellion against the Spanish rule, rallied more Filipinos in support and took control of many provinces of Philippines. On June 12, Aguinaldo proclaimed the independence of the Philippines. On August 13, the US captured Manila from the Spanish after victory in the Battle of Manila. But instead of handing over the city to the local Filipinos, the US itself took control of the city. This action ended the Filipino-American collaboration and it ultimately led to the Philippine-American War the next year in 1899. We will discuss about the Philippine-American War in the next video. On 20th June 1898, the island of Guam was captured by Captain Henry Glass. The capture of Guam was a bloodless conflict and the Spanish troops surrendered without a fight. This brought an end to the Pacific theater of the Spanish-American War. Now let's see in the Caribbean. On May 12, 1898, the US Navy blockaded the island of Puerto Rico and on July 25th, 1300 US troops under General Nelson Miles landed off the coast of Guanica. After a few battles, on August 13, 1898, the Spaniards surrendered Puerto Rico to the US and Puerto Rico came under the control of the United States. In Cuba, on June 6, the battle was fought in the Guantanamo Bay. The Americans were outnumbered almost 5 to 1, but still the Americans were victorious. On July 1st, the Spanish and the Americans clashed at San Juan Hill and at El Cane. The combined American force numbered around 15,000 while the Spaniards only had around 1,200. In San Juan Hill, the first US volunteer cavalry, also known as the Rough Riders, led a successful assault on the Spaniards. Its commander Theodore Roosevelt later went on to become the US president. Both the battles, San Juan Hill and at El Cane, were American victories. The US entered the city of Santiago the next day. And on July 3, 1898, the US Navy defeated the Spanish fleet at the Battle of Santiago de Cuba. The entire Spanish fleet was destroyed, and whatever Spanish ships were left, they rushed back to Spain in order to defend the coastline of Spain. Two weeks later, Spain surrendered, and ultimately it brought an end to the Spanish-American War. After two months of negotiations, the Treaty of Paris was signed on December 10, 1898 in Paris. The US gained Spain's colonies of the Philippines, Puerto Rico and Guam, and Cuba became a US protectorate until 1902. The Spanish-American War lasted only for 16 weeks, between April 21, 1898 to August 13, 1898. This war marked the rise of the United States in world affairs. Spain lost its last remaining colonies and brought an end to the once mighty Spanish Empire. So this was the video on the Spanish-American War. Thank you for watching, please like and share the video and do subscribe to the channel.